What's up everyone? It's Bean Nova, your spirits guide and host of Cork and Curated. And on this episode, we'll be getting into Vera Wang's party. On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the Prosecco made by the one and only Vera Wang. If you don't know who Vera Wang is, unacceptable, but I'm gonna tell you, okay? <laughs> and I feel like the theme of this episode will be failing forward because the things I've learned about Vera and you know her progress and her career is all about making mistakes but still coming out on top. Let's get into it. For those of you who are not familiar with Vera Wang, boo, but Vera Wang is a world-renowned fashion designer and New York native, baby baby, you already know. She's been in the fashion industry since she was 19 years old. And she was exposed to fashion by her mother who happened to be a UN translator and who happened to just take her to fashion shows back in the day. I even think I remember reading that one of her first fashion shows was YSL, so how cool is that? And also Vera started to figure skate at the tender age of six. So before she even got into fashion or spirit she wanted to become a professional figure skater she was skating for years and even tried out for the 1968 olympic team but unfortunately she did not make the cut i'm sure that was just like a very hard trying time in her life but she picked up the pieces and enrolled in sarah lawrence college as a pre-med major and just continued on with her life but we're going to get into the failing forward aspect of that in a moment so she went to sarah lawrence college as a pre-med major and happened to spend a semester in paris where she further discovered and cultivated her love for fashion. She then ended up changing her major to theater and art history. For those of you who have been in college, you know how it is. You just change your major just with the wind. You figure out what you want to do, okay? Uh, Vera even spent a summer in her junior year working at the YSL boutique on Madison Avenue and happened to meet one of Vogue's fashion directors while she was there. So, in true New York fashion, we're all about networking, okay? She kept in contact with that fashion director. And once she graduated in 1971, she began working at Vogue magazine as an assistant. That's so fire. Vera moved up in the company and later became the fashion editor of Vogue at the tender age of 23. But later on in 1987, she decided to transition to work for Ralph Lauren to focus more on design and was one of the lead designers for the label. So while working at Ralph Lauren, she decided to pivot into bridal wear based off of her own wedding. In 1989, when she was about to get married, she said nobody could do it like me and decided to make her own dress, okay? And a year later, she ended up opening her couture bridal store, Vera Wang Bridal in NYC. Now, tying back into her figure skating roots, Vera gained even more traction in 1992 when figure skater Nancy Kerrigan wore her designs at the Winter Olympic Games. So how cool is that? life just coming back to one another. She went on to create costumes for other Olympic skaters such as Michelle Kwan and Nathan Chen, and not to mention all the other celebrities that have donned her apparel. In 2001, Vera released a book, Vera Wang on Weddings. She collaborated with Coles to produce a more affordable line of shoes, clothes, and jewelry, and bags too, and Zales for wedding rings, why not? And then finally in 2013, she received an award from the CFDA for Achievement of Fashion Design in America. So she just did the damn thing, a woman of many crafts. And the idea about failing forward is that even though she thought that she wanted to be a figure skater, look, she ended up designing for them, embracing herself in fashion, and now is like one of the world's top bridal designers. Hopefully one day, huh, I can wear one of her dresses, okay? Now, to go over into the Prosecco, Vera and her brand was all about celebrating life. So it seemed to be right on theme for her to create a Prosecco based on celebration, and that's why it's called Party. She has two cool the Prosecco and a Rosé, and she sourced this at a top winemaking region in Italy known as Araldica. And Araldica is just basically a producer of some of the best Moscatos in America. So a lot of the times when people venture off into wine and spirits making, they just already go to an established con uh, company and just make it happen like that. This was founded in 2021. And if you watch one of our other episodes, you'll learn a lot about Prosecco, type of grapes involved. So this is 100% Galera grapes, aka the Prosecco. Prosecco grapes. And remember when we talked about the DOC? If you don't know, go check that episode out. But we know it's official because it's marked Prosecco DOC. I am just really looking forward to trying it. In party fashion, I feel like it wouldn't be fun if I didn't bring some gals along. So let's move forward with the tasting and I'm going to bring forth my special guest. 
All right, y'all, and then we're back. <laughs> and I have some special guests with me today to try the Vera Wang party. It wouldn't be a party if I didn't bring some beautiful, fabulous ladies, okay? So right next to me, we have Nikki. I've been working with Nikki for a while. She's been behind the scenes, videographer, photographer, and it just feels so good to have a woman on the team. So welcome. <laughs> and my sister, cousin, Gabby, <laughs> to the right, right of me, okay? And yeah, we're gonna get into the Prosecco. This is one of the two cuvées that she has. I feel like you said we tried it, but I don't remember. <laughs> but that's all right, we're going to retry it. Right, right. we're retrying. Bottle wasn't expensive. If I'm not mistaken, it was like under $30. And there's a cute little poem on the back or some words where uh, Vera says, when I think of romance, fun, laughter, friendship, I think of Prosecco. Prosecco is a wine that embodies emotion and celebrates life sharing these moments large and small together, or dreaming all alone. Prosecco is there to delight, savor, charm. Make your occasion a personal celebration. Make any day a special occasion. Love, Vera. Love you, girl. I hope I can afford one of your gowns one day if I ever get married. I think this is lovely that she even made this, so that's why I was like, you know what? In party fashion, I wanna have some lovely ladies with me, and also because it's Women's History Month, yay! And I feel like, um, like I was saying earlier in the segment, one of the things that about Vera's story ah, that resonated with me was about her failing forward, starting as a figure skater. And, you know, I don't even want to say fail because she's a legend, you know, mm -hmm. she didn't fail, you know, and life came full circle so that even though she wasn't a figure skater, she was still able to design for some figure skaters. So life comes full circle. So I feel like I want to talk about failing forward. So Nikki, first and foremost, I want to know, when did you first get involved in videography and photography? So it's kind of a funny story because I started off in front of the camera. I used to model for a long time. I had a cousin who was managing, managing me. And then from there, I went and got my own management. And I never got to the point of my career where I thought it would go to. I never did any fashion shows. I didn't end up on a cover of Vogue or anything. So I took a step back and was like, what do I really want from modeling? And it was just the creativity of it. The being in, being in a position where I can, you know, interact with people, be around the fashion, be around um, the ideas. So that's when I got the opportunity to be behind the camera and experience the same thing and go a little further because then I don't have to worry about how I look, my image, if I'm too short, if I'm too getting a little thick, if no one cares I'm behind the camera. So I feel like it was a full circle moment for me. Mm -hmm. So instead of modeling now, I do more creative directing, I do videography, I do photography. And I got to do a lot of great things. I got to meet you through this. I got to do Rock the Bells, which was really exciting. Um, I got to do a lot of music videos and it's, it's so much more from here to go, so I'm really excited. I love that. Right. I had no idea, and that's amazing, but, but that's like a full circle moment. I love that you were, you didn't feel defeated, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Because I think some people, they have these uh, preconceived notions about old modeling in the industry, but it's like, you can still make, still make <laughs> shake, <laughs> or even behind the scenes. Yeah. It just feels good to have a woman on the team, you know what I mean? It, it makes me feel comfortable, like I'm already comfortable, but this is the type of thing that I want to see. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's cool to see you. you. And that's definitely um, a moment about failing forward because you still are in it and you're yeah. still having the creative aspect of that. So love, love. Yeah, what about you, girl? After going to school for four years and getting my bachelor's, like I was very, I'm also, I'm always very like cautious about what I do like in my career. And I was so like calculated in the beginning, like what I'm going to do next, like I'm going to be this. And in college, like they don't teach you as we know, skills for like life and for your mm. actual career. I thought I knew what I wanted to do. And then when I got into the actual field, like it was, I felt like it was a failure because I was working in advertising and I lasted all of six months mm -hmm. with my first job. So I was like, I, it felt like a failure, but like when I thought about it afterward, I was like, you know what? I learned a lot from that. Like I had a, a micromanager supervisor who was a perfectionist. At first it felt like, sh it felt sh like it really felt sh the time but I learned so much from her like in hindsight so like I would say like what I've learned from my career and I'm in a different place now but like what I learned is that even if something feels bad or you feel like you can't learn from someone like you can learn from anyone 
Like, mm-hmm. even if you don't like the person, like, you can learn from them. And, like, I think that's what I've gathered from my career. I'm in a different place now, and I feel like it's always important to, like, I have my day job, but it's important to explore other passions that mm-hmm. make me happy. And even if it's not makeup, even if it's not beauty or skincare, it's going to be something else. And, like, lifelong, like, we're always going to be continuing to grow and evolve like it's never too late to like pick up something new take a class like mm-hmm. i know you're doing that like you we're very proactive with like constantly improving and that's all i feel like it's about because like you only live once i love to hear this because and i hope this resonates with you all because i know how it is like i feel like a situation with failing forward for me similar to what gabby said like i went to school for media communications you feel me i thought i was going to be like a news anchor i thought i was going to be like i wanted to work for vice so bad like i don't know what it was about the network that i just did and when i graduated college denial 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 and i'm just like yo like y'all got the headquarters in brooklyn and you not like i'm you know miss brooklyn herself you know i went i did the internship at abc i did all this and i was just like things are just not happening the way that i want but now look full circle i was like well my passion has always been media You know, I always, even when I was a little girl, I had my little like talk girl and I was doing like crazy shows and stuff like that. So now, I mean, thanks to social media land, you know, I'm doing it now. And I would have never imagined, like, I was like, what's going to be my niche? Like, what's it going to be? You know, so also too, I have my day job, you know, which has nothing to do with like media, but at the same time, it's honed in my professionalism, you know, customer service, being able to deal with different personalities and navigate like you know different issues problems scenarios and so i'm thankful for it you know i could pay my rent and i can you know do my stuff on the side you know what i mean so honestly cheers to us for failing forward you know i'm really appreciative to have you both in my life you know i'm always looking to cultivate sisterhood you know i'm not Mm -hmm. one of those where it's like oh it's hard to make friends in adulthood no it's not not. you know you just got to put yourself out there and i feel like with the energy especially having nikki on board i'm just like wow like this is just so (laughs) amazing to just have a beautiful woman that's just doing a damn thing behind the scenes and you know i wish you all the best and hope not hopefully when the show pops off and we get invited to champagne france i'm ready (laughs) (laughs) i I plan (laughs) to bring everybody that's been helping me you know, cameraman behind the scenes. You know, it's about the ladies, but him too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, cheers. Let's just taste cheers. it. Yeah. Thank you thank too. You. Where'd you get your glass, child? Not the child. Cheers. All right. This is 11.5% alcohol by volume, so it ain't that strong. <laughs> I like it because it's not that sweet. I'm impartial. I don't really like sweeter uh, things. Yeah. and. Prosecco's usually like it are on the sweeter really, side. Yeah, it goes down. It goes down smooth, right? Mhm. I like it. It's very light. It's so light. It's like dancing on my face. Okay, Vera Chow. All I right. Like yes, love. No, this is really good. Yeah. We're more brute women, you know. We like it on the drier side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's always a little like hmm. You know, that's why I'm not even trying to touch Moscato. Like, I don't even know if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> like, but we will, we will, you know, because it's a little sweeter, and there's nothing wrong with that. And that's the point of the show. It's just like to, you have to just try different yes. things. And this is what I've been doing along the journey, going into a store. I'm like, oh, this bottle looks interesting. Let me try it. So, and then learning the captivating stories behind, behind the it. brands. It's just been so ill. So, Vera Wang, shout out to you. This mm-hmm. is delicious. I would implore you all good. to try this. It's very light. Did you like it? Okay, cool. Love, love. It has like that fruity taste at the end. Yeah. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I don't yeah, know. Like, taste. It's like, it's kind of like apple. Apple, like right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, and, like and this is 100% Glara grape, so she really did the thing with it. I'm really enjoying this. I feel like we're going to keep this on the shelf. This is definitely something good to have to entertain with. Like I said, under $30. We'll link the website so that you can also check out the rosé. Shout out to the lovely ladies in the building. Shout out to shout us out for to doing you. it. You know what yes, I'm saying? Shout out to you. Oh, all. you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the best. best episode. Y'all are the best. Thank you for being here. You know, just for Thank being for open enough to do this. And um, yeah, y'all, so thanks for tuning in. Remember to drink responsibly, and we'll see you next time on Cork and Curated.